We all know that mechs are overpriced bricks and suck at anything related to gaming. Well, I've always been a big fan of most Apple products. Well, all of their products, if I'm being really honest. In the past, I even used to work as a full-time game developer on an iMac. Fun fact. The first original versions of Unity only worked on a Mac. And I personally never thought that they were overpriced either, but we'll leave that discussion for another time as in this video I've wanted to talk about how it is to develop games on a Mac and how it compares to game development on a Windows PC. Now, it is obvious that Windows and especially DirectX have been the industry standard in PC gaming for many a year. It probably wasn't until Valve originally started porting their games to Mac and Linux back in 2010 with the release of Portal, Team Fortress, Team Fortress 2, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2 and such that gaming on those platforms became more viable. Back in those days, I was still rocking a 27-inch iMac as my main and only PC, so I was a big fan of Valve as they allowed me to game a bit more. And this new influx of gaming on Macs also brought a whole new wave of indie game developers using Unity to just publish their games on Mac and Linux as well as it wasn't a lot of extra work. Now back then, Macs had a special feature and that was that you could easily dual boot Windows on them. Those Macs used a normal Intel processor and generally also used AMD graphic cards. And with this nice piece of software called Bootcamp created by Apple, you could install Windows and all the extra needed Mac drivers with just a single click of a button. And this was a great feature for game development in general. Unity works fine on Mac OS, but if you wanted to test the game on Windows, I could then reboot my Mac into Windows and test it out no problem. However, nowadays, Apple designs and uses their own CPU and GPU chips in all of their Macs and Bootcamp no longer exists, which is a true shame as it means that Mac OS, for me as a game developer, is dead. I have a MacBook Pro M1, one of the fastest MacBooks Apple released a few years ago, and I really like it. Unity runs great on it, and if I wanted, I could switch to fully develop my game City of Springs on the MacBook. And trust me on this, all the new Macs are seriously fast. They can easily compare to high-end AMD or Intel CPUs in speed and are much more efficient in the process, so they use way less power. But I don't want to use Macs, and for a few very good reasons. When you work on a Mac, you are locked on Apple's graphics API called Metal. And while there's nothing wrong with that, the shader requirements of Metal are a bit different than those of DirectX, and a bit more strict than that. This makes creating your own shaders a bit annoying and more time consuming. But even more annoying is it when you use complex third-party assets that didn't take Metal into account, essentially stranding you with a complex code base that you'll have to fix yourself or ask support for. <laughs> but not having the option to dual boot into Windows to test your game is the worst. It would mean that you'd have to get a second PC that runs on Windows. And now this is still an issue when you work on a Windows PC and want to test or publish your game on a Mac. But luckily, you don't need a super high-end Mac for that. In most cases, a cheap MacBook Air is more than fine. And a small MacBook like that fits almost everywhere. Of course, you can always install a virtual machine on your Mac and run Windows in that. But it's either very expensive with something like Parallels or very unusable with basically every other free virtual machine software as they don't have access to GPU acceleration. Meaning that testing a game through a virtual machine will give you less than one FPS. So don't think that this is a viable option for game development. By the way, I've used Parallels in the past and it's quite horrible as well next to being very expensive to use. In my Mac days, I've always used this coding IDE called Mono Develop. However, at some point they stopped further development and it quickly became a chore to use it and very buggy as well. Luckily, Microsoft stepped in and made a version of Visual Studio for Mac OS. However, people that use Macs understand this best, but 
all software that Microsoft published for Macs never really worked great. It just never felt snappy or in line with the other software that you use on a Mac. I know that the now very popular Coding ID Rider is also available on Mac, but I never used it, so I can't tell you how well it works. Love or hate Macs all you want, there's one immutable fact, and that is that the most powerful game development laptop you can buy and last you throughout most of your day on a single charge is a MacBook. If I have to go showcase a demo to a client or am asked to work a day at the office of a client or simply go on holiday but still want to be able to do some serious work, I grab my MacBook and know that I have with me a PC that is nearly as fast as my desktop PC at home. I've had many expensive laptops in the past, but I will never again buy another one. They drain the battery within an hour, overheat, and they have slower laptop-specific hardware. While every MacBook is exactly as fast as its Mac desktop counterpart. But I guess the one and most annoying part of using a Mac is Apple's vision of how a personal computer should work. It needs to be simple, elegant and attractive to look at, simply making them less appealing to the people who want the freedom to adjust everything. I very much like the Apple concept. I am more than happy to bend to some design restrictions if it means that I don't have to deal with the bullshit of everything that's breaking in Windows daily. <laughs> How often do you have a blue screen of death due to some idiotic thing that just happened in Windows, only caused due to something that you did yourself more than a year ago that you don't actually remember? Now, you can also majorly mess up macOS too, of course, but in my experience, it doesn't happen as easy. So, would I, as an Apple fanboy... I mean, is $1,000 really that much money for a monitor stand? I mean, what even is $1,000? Would I ever go back to Mac as my main development platform? No. Well, not unless they bring back Bootcamp. When there's a stable way to dual boot with Windows, I'll happily jump ship right away, as I absolutely hate the fact that my current PC uses up to 1,000 watts of power daily compared to, well, the MacBook that uses a maximum of 100 watts to complete the same tasks in almost the same amount of time. So Apple, please bring back Bootcamp. But I guess for now I have to keep slaving away on my Windows stove. This is fine. To get ready for the release of the first patch of City of Springs early next week. So please take care and hope to see you again next week.